meditating. And while you're finding that, uh, I'm going to just ask the Lord his blessing. Father, we come to you this morning. We just thank you so much for your presence here this morning. We thank you for the liberty that we feel uh, in Christ. We'd ask you right now, Lord, that you would bless every family that's given in support of this ministry, that you would bless them in such a way that they would know and they would realize that the hand of God was upon their family and upon their lives. Open the windows of heaven, O oh God, and bless them abundantly. And Father, I ask you that you give me clarity this morning to speak your word, that your Holy Spirit would speak through me into the hearts of your people, and that we might all come away, Lord, with a greater understanding of your expectation of us in these last days. In Jesus' name we pray and we thank you. Amen and amen. Romans chapter 13. And I'm going to read just a couple of verses there. Um, beginning with verse 11. The apostle is writing this, the apostle Paul, to the church at Rome. And he says in verse 11, And that knowing the time, that now it is high time to awake out of sleep. For now is our salvation nearer than when we believed. The night is far spent, the day is at hand. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness, and let us put on the armor of light. Praise God. Paul here is speaking to Christians. He's not speaking to unbelievers. He's not speaking to people out in the world. These are the, the children of God, blood-bought children of God that he is speaking to. And it begins by saying, and knowing the time. Every child of God should know the time that they live in. Now, Paul here, and through many of his epistles, he referred to his time, as did Peter, as the last days. Well, we're 2,000 years after that, so you know we're in the last days. We, we need to know the time that we're in. All prophecy has been fulfilled. There's no prophecy remaining for Jesus to come back and catch his church away. We're in the last times. And Paul says here, knowing the time. And here's what I'm saying. We should know and we should understand how close we are to eternity. And understand what eternity is. Eternity is this. When you step into eternity, the last uh, chapter of the book of Revelation said, He that is holy, let him be holy still. And he that is filthy, let him be filthy still. In other words, eternity locks you down. What you are is what you are as eternity approaches. And you and I this morning, we are one breath away from eternity. One heartbeat away from eternity. No, 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 no. You don't have 20 more years. You don't have 10 more years. God may gracefully give you 10, but don't count on it. You could go home this afternoon, as could I. So the scripture tells us as Christians, knowing the time, we ought to have a sense of the closeness of eternity. The closeness also of Jesus' return, knowing the time. That now, if we have an understanding of how close we are to eternity, then now it is high time to awake out of sleep. Now, how many know it's not that difficult for, for a Christian to get into a slumber spirit? It's not that difficult. And now it's difficult to admit it, <laughs> but it's not difficult to allow a, slumber, a spiritual slumber spirit to come over your life where everything becomes spiritually ho-hum. Where it's just what I did yesterday, I do that again today, and then I'll do it again tomorrow. And we, we can easily get into a slumber spirit instead of having a lively relationship with the Lord. See, we can get used to church attendance. We, we can get used to our little short prayers that, well, we don't really press in. We just go through the motions of saying a prayer. Come on, somebody. We just go through the motions of reading the Bible, but we don't really press in to the way that we used to. We can easily fall asleep. And Paul is saying, listen, if you know the time, then understand it's high time, meaning the hours right now, it's high time for us to wake ourselves up, to stir ourselves. 
Not to allow ourselves to just live in this spiritual slumber spirit where we have no real uh, dynamic reaction to the moving and the operation of the spirit. It's high time. Wake up. And I'm not just speaking to you. I'm speaking to me. I'm speaking to those on webcast. I'm speaking to all of us. It's time for the church to wake up and come back to, to, to discerning spiritual things. Knowing the time. It's high time. Have you ever heard somebody, maybe a parent tell you, listen, it's high time that you got that right? <laughs> That's what the Lord is telling us. It's high time that we awaken out of our sleep. Now, when he says sleep, what is he talking about? It, it, it means that this slumber spirit has slowly come upon us and we no longer react to things the way that we should. When you look at the uh, ministry of Jesus Christ, his whole ministry is prophetic, and many of the things that Jesus went through and the disciples are a foreshadowing of what the end-time church, what you and I will go through. And if you'll remember, right before the end of Jesus' ministry, just like right before the end of the church age, when Jesus comes back to get us, Jesus went into the garden, and he had to wake up Peter. He had to wake up the apostles. Do you remember that? Here's what he told them in Matthew chapter 26, verse 40. He said, and he, he cometh to his disciples and finds them asleep. See, it's no different than right now. Much of the church is asleep. Let me, let me stop there for a minute. Much of the church that we recognize as the church in the United States and really around the world is asleep. But even more of the church that we recognize as the church is not even the church. They're not even born again. They're not even saved. They don't even know God at all. They're just, they're just religious. <clears throat> but, but Jesus comes to his disciples and finds them asleep. And he said to Peter, what? Notice that word, what? You got to put some attitude behind it. What? Could you not pray with me one hour? Now, that, that's amazing to me because there's an expectation on Jesus' part that Peter and the disciples could, could pray for one hour, that they had the ability to pray for one hour. How many ever had to pray for one hour, tried to pray for one hour? When you first started, it wasn't that easy, was it? You had to press your flesh down. You had to fight. You had to push through. And Jesus is saying, uh, you couldn't pray with me for, for one hour. Then he says, Watch. And again, that refers to be aware of what's around you. Keep your eyes open. Stay on alert. Watch and pray. It may spend some time with God. I'm not going to ask for a show of hands, but how many have a hot prayer life? Come on, it's just burning up. Come on, all of us need to have that. I came into prayer this morning. I, on Sundays, I always come up about 4 o'clock, and I come up just to pray and spend time with God and and, I, and I've done it for years. I, I've done it for 25 years. This is my life. But I came in this morning, as many times in, in the past, and I mean to tell you God got a hold of me. I mean, that prayer was just flowing out of my spirit, just the wonderful works of God flowing out of my spirit. And it's such a blessing to, to find yourself in prayer, and then there's, the Holy Spirit shows up. But Jesus is telling all of us, watch and pray. And he goes on to say, watch and pray so that, are you seeing that? So that, here's the reason you need to watch and pray, so that you don't enter into temptation. Now, there is strong temptation in the world today. The scripture tells us that in these last days there would be a strong delusion. <laughs> I didn't know it was going to be this strong that what we have right now. I mean, this is crazy. You know, when you got, you got, you got men that said, well, I woke up this morning and I, I felt like little Daisy. And so today I'm Daisy. Got women that wake up and say, well, this morning, you know, I felt like Big Bubba. So, so I'm Big Bubba. You got parents allowing their little children less than three years old to, uh, to practice sexual fluidity to change through hormones to the other sex. We're in a strong delusion. It's a strong delusion. Uh, there, there's even more crazy things than that, but I, I just won't get into them because they're, they're too weird. <laughs> but he says to watch and pray so that 
you enter not into temptation. Now, I know as long as we're in the presence of the Holy Spirit, you go, well, that stuff is strange. That's way out there stuff. But you let the Holy Spirit take back his hand off of your life or you walk away from him, you'll return like a dog to the vomit and like a sow to her waddling in the mire. You'll go right back. I, 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 know, I know men that I grew up with, and there was no such thing as homosexuality for the most part when I grew up. It was there, but it was like you never heard about it. But now I go back, I find those same guys out on Facebook or something. Now they're, they're gay. And I'm like, well, you weren't gay when, I was, when we was in high school. You was the man. <laughs> in other words, what I'm saying, there is a spirit out there. There is a delusion out there. There is a temptation out there. And you and I need to pray so that we don't enter into that temptation. Oh, the spirit is willing. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. I, don't, I, I think every Christian wants to have a stronger life. Oh, but I have to press through the flesh. Some of us, we have to ask permission from the flesh if we want to go to the prayer meeting. I'm going to say it again. Some of us have to ask permission from our flesh. Can I go to the prayer meeting? And the flesh says, no, you're tired. Sit down. Amen. Amen. Some of us, we want, to, we, we want to study our Bibles, but the flesh doesn't give us permission. Say, no, no, you, you, you need to watch whatever program on television. And the, the Spirit is willing to do the things of God. It's our own flesh that stops us, mine and yours alike. I'm not preaching down to you. I got the same flesh. I'm made out the same flesh you are. And I got to press it and walk it down just like you do. But Jesus said, watch and pray so that you don't enter into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. Then he comes back in uh, verse 45. He left. He left for He woke him up. He left for a few minutes. The disciples fell asleep again. Verse 45, Jesus cometh. Then cometh he to his disciples and said unto them, sleep on now. Take your rest. Behold, the hour is at hand. And you'll notice that Peter openly, verbally denied Jesus Christ as a result of not praying. Had he been praying, maybe the outcome would have been different. Maybe it would have been different. But, but he ended up denying the Lord. Well, all of the disciples, all, all, all of the disciples, they all ran off and left Jesus. They, they all backed up and moved away from him. Although their profession would have been, yeah, I can go through it. But when, when the storm came, they all backed up as a result of allowing a sleep spirit to sit on their lives in the hour of delusion. And they weren't ready as they thought they were. Now here's something about spiritual sleep is very much like natural sleep. Have you ever had somebody sleeping and you had to go wake them up? Or, or you're watching TV and somebody falls asleep. Say, hey, man, you fell asleep. No, I didn't. I, didn't, I wasn't asleep. <laughs> I just had my eyes closed. <laughs> when someone is asleep, they will deny that they are asleep. They'll deny it. And when someone's spiritual sleep, they will deny that slumber has taken over their life. They're dull in every area. They're no longer a sharp tool for the Lord. There's a dullness that comes over them, but they'll deny, no, no, I'm not sleep. I'm woke. That's one characteristic of sleep. Here's another one. When someone is asleep, and, and maybe you've uh, experienced this as well, when someone's sleeping, you wake them up, they say, go on, stop. Get five more minutes, just five more minutes. When someone is asleep, they don't want to wake up. They want to stay asleep. The same thing is spiritually. When someone is asleep, spiritually, first of all, they're going to deny their sleep, but then they don't want to wake up because their flesh is comfortable when they're asleep. Have you ever noticed how comfortable it is when you're tired and you slip into bed and that comforter, you pull that comforter up? <laughs> and it's almost like you're in heaven. <laughs> and you're relaxed and the comforter's warm and it's cold out there. And man, the flesh... Is comfortable. The second characteristic is a, a sleeping person doesn't always want to wake up. Here's another characteristic of sleep. When someone is asleep, they cease all productive activity. They are no longer productive. This is good preaching. 
And when someone is spiritually asleep, they begin to lose their productivity for the kingdom of God. They begin to, the flesh won't let them. The flesh is taking control, and though their spirit on the inside, they want to, but, but they can't because the flesh has them, and they're asleep. They cease all activity. But here's the most crucial one for a person that's asleep. They lack the ability, a person who is naturally asleep in the natural, they lack the ability to discern what is going on around them. You can walk up, you can walk into the room, they're asleep, and you can stand right over them and they don't know. You can lift your hand right over their head, they don't know, and pow, slap them right across the face. They don't know anything you're doing until it hits. And that's what's getting ready to happen in this church age. We need to have some discernment. Wake up. It's time to wake up. Get back into your Bible. If you've ever, have a, if you've ever had a Bible uh, study life, you know that it is exciting when you get into the Word of God. You're reading, and there's things that just illuminate you, that just excite you. And no matter how many times you've read that passage, you didn't see that. 25, 30 years, I never saw that before. But there it is. It's been there the whole time. It's exciting. Watch. The scripture says it's high time for you and I to awaken. Then finally the scripture says, here's why. Let me go back and read it. High time to awaken out of sleep, for now is our salvation nearer than when we first believed. In other words, the, the consummation of our salvation is closer now than the day you got saved. You've been moving closer and closer to it. Ever how many years you've been living to the Lord is closer and closer. And none of us know how close it is. All we know is closer than it's ever been. He goes on to say, the night is far spent. The night refers to man's hour of evil. Since Adam staggered from behind a tree in the garden way back in Genesis, man has produced nothing but evil. We don't like to look at it this way. We are evil creatures. Amen. And yes, I know we're saved, and I know that God has given us a new heart, and I know that he's put his Holy Spirit in us, but we are still capable of evil. I was thinking about this earlier when I was a young Christian. I hadn't been saved, I don't know, six months. I remember this. I lived a week. No sin whatsoever. Absolutely no sin. And I remember thinking about it. God, I've been sinless this whole week. But now I look back on that and I realize I thought that because I didn't know what sin was. <laughs> I thought it was just running women and smoking dope. <laughs> But sin is an attitude of rebellion within our hearts that can manifest in any, in any way. He says the night is far spent. It means that the hour of man's sinfulness is almost over. Now remember, the way that tree falls, that's the way it lays. When, when Jesus steps back, when we, fall, when we enter into eternity, what you are is what you stay. I, uh, when we did our study on the book of Revelation on uh, tribulation period, uh, men and women die in wholesale numbers. In that seven-year period of time, I've calculated from the scripture that roughly 75% of the population of the earth will perish during that seven-year tribulation period. Can you imagine that? It's over 7 billion people on the planet, and 75% of them perish within a seven-year period in, in horrific ways. And we say, will God really do that? Well, let's look at the history. Let's go back to Noah's day. And let's look at the flood. 99.99999% of the people on the planet all perish. God wiped out all of them except for eight souls. And so we're coming to a time that God is about to end man's reign of sinful activity and darkness, wickedness and depravity. He's about to put an end to it. 
Now, for, for those who come to Jesus through the cross, to a large degree, he's already put an end to much of our wickedness. If you're saved today, you, you, unless you just got saved, you, your problem shouldn't be smoking dope and drinking and, and running women. and that, You should have already graduated from that. But there's still the attitudes of the heart. It's still so easy to speak a word and it, you didn't, it, it just came out in the wrong note. <laughs> it's easy for us, even baptized with the Holy Spirit, sudden anger grip your heart. And before you realize it, it came out of your mouth. Does anybody know what I'm talking about? It can, selfishness can still take a hold of us when we're selfish. And it's not about a brother or sister. It's about the big eye. <laughs> that, that's, that's the sins that they, they just seem to hang on. And God does a little work here, and then as soon as that one's gone out, my Lord, here's another issue right here. But the night is far spent. The day is at hand. Now, the day speaks of the day of the Lord. And let me explain. The biblical concept of the day of the Lord started really at, at the incarnation. When Jesus came the first time, that started the last days. That started the day of the Lord. And the day of the Lord goes all the way back, uh, all the way forward until his second advent when he comes to this planet permanently. <laughs> oh, glorious day. <laughs> When he comes and he puts his foot back on Olivet, suddenly all of these confounded governments of the world, he strips them all down, and the Bible says the government shall be upon his shoulder. Hallelujah. And of his government and of his increase, there shall be no end. And it says the whole world will be filled with his glory. Think about what that means. Right now, the whole world is full of sin. There's sin in every household. Yes, even yours. There's sin in every heart. Yes, even yours. But he's saying the day is coming, the whole world will be filled with his glory. That means every household full of the glory of God. Every heart full of the glory of God. And sin is no more. I can't wait. Even so, come quickly, Lord Jesus. Amen. Wrap it up. <laughs> Wrap it up. The night is far spent as the day is at hand. Based on that, therefore, let us, the people of God, cast off the works of darkness. Now, what is the primary work of darkness on the planet today? At night is when we go to sleep. It's when we slumber. He's saying, based on the knowledge that the, 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 day is far uh, the night is far spent, the day is at hand, therefore let us cast off this slumber spirit that, that so easily comes upon us. Have you ever told yourself, man, I'm going to beef, beef up my study life. Man, I'm getting back into the Word. And it lasts about a day and a half. And now you're struggling again. Come on, it's not just you, it happens to all of us. Man, you got to press the inner in, to press the inner in. You, you got to push. And you got to do it on a consistent basis. I, uh, I, 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 work out, I, I work out at the gym. And I remember when I, is it, and even now, but when I first started going to the gym, I was shaped kind of like a light bulb. You know, skinny at the top and then just whoop. <laughs> And uh, I, I began to work out, and I hired a trainer to, to help me out because I had no idea what I was doing, as most people in the gym don't. And uh, he began to train me. And there were times it would be my time to go to the gym, and I was like, man, I don't want to see that brother this morning. <laughs> and we would have to like, do legs. Anybody do legs? And, man, it was like, man, this guy's killing me. And I didn't want to go, but something on the inside just kept pushing in. I just kept pushing in. And it, it didn't happen in a, a month. It didn't happen in, in six months. It didn't happen in a year. But little by little, I noticed that the light bulb was getting skinnier. <laughs> and then I noticed at one point in time, I'm not there right now, I need to go back, that the light bulb was actually turned upside down where the bottom was skinny and the top was bigger. Are you, are, are you getting the visual? But my point is that it, you have to be consistent 
You have to do it over and over and over and over. Whether you feel like doing it or whether you don't, you have to press in. And all of a sudden you realize, I can discern better what's going on around me now. You feel that rejuvenated life return to you. You feel alive in the Holy Ghost. All of a sudden you can just be on your job somewhere and you feel the presence of God come upon you. You go into prayer and prayer is not a labor. It's not a, it's not a labor, but it just flows up out of your spirit. It's high time. The hour is upon us. It's high time to awaken out of our sleep. The day is at hand. The night is far spent. The day is at hand. Cast off the works of darkness. And again, the works of darkness is nighttime is when people go to sleep. But most of the world sleeps at night. And the hour, spiritually speaking, that we're in now is darker than it's ever been. And, and there's, it's, it's easy for us to spiritually fall asleep. In fact, if I can remember this scripture, because iniquity shall abound. How many know iniquity is abounding? The Bible says the love of many shall wax cold. And we're in that hour right now, and I'm seeing it with my own eyes. The love of many is waxing cold. You remember, you know, we as Christians, we remember... The day we got saved and the day we got the baptism in the Holy Spirit. Remember some of the things that God has done in our life. How he's used us, how he's blessed us, how he's, he's ministered through us to other people. And we tend to take what we were and try to pull it over what we are. Am I making myself clear? Well, I used to be a powerful man of God, but now I'm asleep. So I'm going to use what I was as a, as a comforter and pull it over my sleeping, slumbering spirit. Look at Samson. Samson was one of the most powerful men, physically powerful in the Bible. I mean, this man, would, he would defeat a thousand Philistines with nothing in his hands but the jawbone of an ass. He was so powerful, he'd rip the gates off the city and carry them up the hill. And when they wanted to defeat Samson, they talked to Delilah. Delilah said, I know how to do it. The Bible says she made him to sleep in her lap. He got her, he, uh, uh, she got him comfortable, his head's in her lap, and she just stroking his head. You know how you do a baby? <laughs> You just do the baby like that, and you see my eyes start to flicker. She made him to sleep. And as soon as she went to sleep, she bound him. He had lost all his liberty. Gave him over to the Philistines. They punched his eyes in. He lost his spiritual and physical eyesight. And they bound him up. He lost his liberty. Oh, saints, don't go to sleep. If you are asleep, wake up. Stir yourself in the Holy Ghost. Amen. Stir yourself in prayer. Stir yourself in the study of the word because the hour is only going to get darker and darker and darker. You don't have to look at the government to know that. You can look at your Bible. All this that we see going on in the world, these things must needs be. The world is being maneuvered into a position that the Antichrist can make his debut. And it's being maneuvered so that the final conflict between good and evil occurs. And you and I, we don't want to be asleep. It's just like Jesus. He got to the last of his ministry. He said, the hour is come. He said, I'll not speak much more with you because the prince of this world cometh. But he hath nothing in me. And then he went and prayed. He went and prayed, and when, when Judas and the other soldiers came upon him, he had just finished a good prayer. He had just been seeking God's face concerning what was going to happen, saying, let this cup pass from me, but if not your will, uh, then so be it. But, but he had just been praying about what was going to happen. You and I right now, we need to be praying what we see with our eyes. There's not much more sin that the human race can in, in, endeavor in. We got pedophilia across the nation. We got babies murdered in wholesale numbers. We got sin and wickedness. People changing supposedly their gender from A to B and from B to A. We've got little children being taken to doctors, given hormones so that they cannot go through puberty to try to change their... We are in the deepest evil that we've ever seen and we don't even know all of it. 
We don't know what these scientists are doing with their manipulating genes and putting them with the genes of an animal. We don't know what they're doing. We don't know what artificial intelligence is doing. It's so developed now that every time you get on social network, you're talking to IA, uh, uh, AI. We don't know how far it's gone, but we know this. We're in the hour. We're in the hour. Watch and pray. Musicians, please come back. Watch and pray. The hour is upon us. Danger is upon us. If you'll notice when they took Jesus, when, the hours, when they sprung the hour and they took Jesus, all the disciples had to run for their life. And I don't mean just that night. I mean they had to, for days they were in hiding. They were in hiding until the Holy Ghost fell on the day of Pentecost. That's when they came out of hiding. But saints, you and I, we already got the indwelling of the Holy Ghost. We need to be praying, God, stir this up on the inside of me. Stir this up on the inside of me. I need a fresh anointing. Thank God for the anointings of days gone by, but I, I, need, I need some water from heaven right now. Amen. The night is spent, the day is at hand. Oh, you know what? I got one little verse. I'll be very quick. Let us cast off the works of darkness, just spoke on that, and put on the armor of light. You go to Ephesians chapter 6, verses 11 through 13, it tells you to put on the whole armor of God. And it speaks, we have a message out on our, in our Bible archives that breaks down every element of that passage of Scripture. We need to put on the whole armor of God, the armor of light, that we might be able to stand in the evil day, because the evil day is upon us. Amen. Would you bow your heads in prayer, please? Father, we just love you this morning. Thank you, Father, for you tell us the ending from the beginning. You open up the eyes of our understanding that we can see what the human eye cannot see. We can discern what the human heart cannot fathom. Father, we thank you this morning for the written word of God. We thank you for your Holy Spirit in our lives. And we ask you now, Father, no matter where we are, be asleep sleepy or fully awoke oh God that you will stir us now stir us in the Holy Spirit come on all over the room would you stand to your feet this morning and let's just reach out to God together and I'm going to ask you this morning open your mouth and talk to God come on don't be timid don't be, don't be ashamed just open your mouth and say God I've got to have more than I have right now I've got to have more of your spirit I've got to have more of your word I've got to have more confidence in who you are Come on, just reach out to God right now. He wants to hear your voice. I'm praying for myself. Pray for yourself. God, I've got to have more than what I have. I need a fresh anointing and a fresh stirring of your Holy Spirit. God, I need the power of Pentecost to be made real in my life. Father, I reach out to you right now in the name of Jesus Christ. Take all fear out of my heart and replace it with that unknown faith, with that faith of the heart the faith that pleases you. Come on, just reach out to the Lord this morning. You need something from him. Just ask God this morning. Ask God. Lord, we seek you right now, Lord God. Speak to each and every one of us here, Lord God. As we seek your face and say, God, yes, wake us up, Lord God, from our slumber, Lord God. We choose to wake up for the time is near. The day is upon us. Now is the hour to awake out of sleep. Hallelujah. Lord God, we seek your face right now. And say, prepare us for that, that which you've called us to do, Lord God. Prepare us for this hour. Let us be set into that place that you have called each and every one of us to be in this last and final hour. Lord God, have your way in us, Lord God. We seek you with all our hearts. Help us to awaken our, our households, Lord God. Hallelujah. Lord, we need you. We need your Holy Spirit. We need your power in this day and in, the, in this hour. Lord God, we thank you. We thank you for the word this morning. We thank you for your Holy Spirit, which resides inside each and every one of us, to empower us, to give us grace, to awaken us. Lord, we repent for those sins of the past. And Lord God, we choose to move forward with you. We thank you for the blood which washes us. Now is the time to rise up and be who we're called to be in this last hour. We thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. Glory to God. What a good word. We need to wait.
wake up, church. We need to wake up. Amen? Amen. Praise God. Well, reminder, if you're interested in lady, please see me. Also, for those that have ordered uh, your first worship, please see me. I'll be out in the lobby. If you want to order first worship CDs, you can go ahead and get those today. They are available. So, again, I'll be in the lobby. With that, we love you. God bless you. You are dismissed. Thank you for watching, and please subscribe. You can also find more of our videos in our archives at ChristUnveiled.org. We'll see you next time.